So I'm going to read from two of my publications. This is the first one, um, The Logic of the Stairwell. I hope you can hear me at the back. I'll try and project that. The lights in slow-mo pass and the soft moss weeps under a leaden sky. With cracking breaths and straggling eye lies down to sleep in melismatic drift. The moon backs behind mottled glass and the western mountains agonise beneath damp skies. I dreamt in scratchy rhymes of the road that basks in a rainstorm. Heavy eyes carry across the sweep of land while footing the hills of the village ensconced presents itself in flapping shutters and wooded, wounded walls. Small homes sitting grit-like in a sponge as immutable crimes pay out, play out on the dull green shores. Villagers with peanut shell face, faces think of each other as misplaced pasts. Where children feign dying on the fireside rugs, the shrill brethren in a peeling temple look out across their desaturated Elysium. Strung up roadkill on the hunter's fence bleeds on the passers-by as they hungrily pay for terminal rations. The poor boy, weeping to punish his subdued friend, finally bolts for the door. Fornicators call home, pausing now and then at the sound of the spitting light. A guilty step in the thick layer of angel dust, soot-like plumes a little, fade to dark. Um, I'm going to read mostly from my new book, which I'll talk about in a few seconds. I'm just going to read one from this one. This is a, a book published when I was living in Ireland. So, of course, as you might expect, the title is in Flemish. Ila is King Belkia. <laughs> One. Body bag bread, monoculture beer, organic roots, malicious utilities, civilian trap, horseless guards, neighbourhood fear, armoured islands, easy talk, uncommon games. Two. The problem is, it's just one colour. Now, the colour's fine as the colour, but you might just stare at the black all night and wish for the evenings and the dawn. <laughs> <laughs> you just dropped about that. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Um, this is a book that was published, kindly published, uh, a few years ago by the Nice Forks and Spoons, Spoons Press, uh, and it's a mixture of photographs and um, poems. I won't read the photographs. <laughs> This is one actually from Paris. A land of bright sky swings. These ropes may be contrails, nothing more than frozen adventures falling out the back of disappointed holidaymakers. But the seats are hard and solid, dedicated myth, the kind that kill by inattention. I walk across them every day, ice on the black bridge, three stories up. I'm out of the colour red. My eyes see early blue in faces, green and sky black rain. I'm out of the taste of hot, all is turmeric and cheese. No coffee, no chilli, no wild. I'm out of the shine in eyes, mine I think. Everywhere I look, half-life automatons stagger at shop. I'm out of the shock of cold rain. No, that's not, I need the shock of cold rain. It's time for November, it's time for ice, it's time for the stream on the skin. It's a bit hot today. <laughs> um, this is an ex uh, a pretty silly experiment. It's half English, half Flemish. The, the Flemish bit, I've tried to use words which sound roughly like the English. I strongly suspect most people won't get them, but just listen and you might get a feel. And, uh, well, anyway, I'm going to read it, sorry. Tally was two U-boats and a minky. A choir or male pups. Skelet cabinet, vacancies a, spare bit of normal balloon and... Loss of the country's largest tourist, invest in delusional. Skeletal cabinet, mein the bowl, garage in pressy atmosphere. Species had a haremic extinction, followed a condom. Skelet central, the balloon floor, four and hit mirror. Inverness police suspect the terrorist noise abatement society. 
This uh, but first of all, uh, a prose piece called Will of the Wisp. In 1942, Adolf Hitler stood on a first floor balcony in Maribor, lampooning the local culture. His immediate audience was a circle of bowed figures, a marble huddle shouldering the memory of plague. Halfway through his speech, with its drench of insults, the sheep dip of German obloquy, the crowd opened up for a single drunk bearing a large ice cream cone, overloaded and dripping. Space was needed for the swaying pirouettes of this inebriate, always looping slightly away from his intended course, before pairing up again with his date for the night, his partner in the waltz, the yielding talk of ice cream. As more and more onlookers turned to smile at this creeping whirligig, the vector of the crowd's attention swung steadily away from the jerking nail brush moustache of Herr Hitler. The Führer suddenly realised in one of his on-stage breaks involving a short strut in I'm a little teapot with two handles mode that he had been eclipsed, something that had not occurred since the bad old Munich days were succeeded by the good old Munich days. Like thermal imaging, he soon identified the glowing source of this combustion, eyes narrowing in genre recognition. Satire, not suicide bomb. Character assassin, not sniper. Chaplin, thought Hitler, that little fucker, and his ludicrous film. The great dictator had not been seen in Germany. It had been screamed twice for the party top brass, who all watched it with unnatural restraint, apart from one major who left in the middle of a coughing fit. Chaplin had used his first talkie to strip language of its meanings, filling the screen with street signs in Esperanto, and giving his ranting Hitler figure speech after speech of dyspeptic nonsense. The film contains the last great set piece of the silent cinema era, a balletic partnership between Hitler and the globe, which is transformed into a gas-filled balloon spinning and dancing on the fingertips of the dictator, who indulges it, teases it, and finally destroys it. The disturbing gracefulness of this scene is trounced by the cocky Jewish barber, the second of two parts played by Chaplin, who actually employs the goose step to kick his boots off before going to sleep in a concentration camp. But Chaplin was not the inspiration for our Maribor drunk. Unconscious or not, that role belonged to Keaton. Keaton, mirror for basilisks, whose emblem is a blank tombstone, author of a world whose people misunderstand each other perfectly, where languages outnumber speakers, all silent. Married by mistake, employed in error, provided for by accident, Loser for whom every door opens, for whom the subway ends in a frozen north, where snowshoes are made out of two guitars. Keaton, who always eludes an army of cops, massing in ever greater numbers. Artist of ingenuous ruses, redistributor of chaos, forever in the wrong place at the right time. A conjurer with only one trick, the one where he suddenly finds himself in the other person's shoes. The Führer physiology, tightening scalp and bulging peepers, was enough to scramble all the enforcement officers on duty. Guided by ripples in the crowd, they converged at a tilt on the dance, not the dancer, flowing around and across the exhibition space, then ebbing to reveal nothing more than a puddle of ice cream and a pair of emptily standing boots. Imbeciles. Hitler gathered himself. Boots, he observed, waving aside the hang-dog sniffer gendarmes. Boots, he previewed. That's all that will be left of them. All that will be left is more than just equipment. All that has been left is a library of boots. Not peasant boots that only sing the song of the earth. Not Heideggerian clodhoppers stuck in the mud of dumb routine, dignity of exhaustion, sweetness of anxiety, 
joy of starvation, criminally self-sacrificing boots, inhabited and owned and barely ever taken off, attached to the silage of only one place, and all in the name of an idiot reliability. These boots are cast-offs, bought in the market second-hand, heels frayed by the city streets, not field paths, hurrying from the main square in Graz the night the glass was broken, treading rubble in Vienna when Dolphus ordered in the artillery, following carts and handcarts along the towpaths of the Sava above Zagreb, kicking stones in the yards of Sombatelli, following at a distance an aloof young woman limping slightly in Trieste. Migrant boots, revenant boots, boots that have beaten no path, that have not found their way, the seven league boots of the European diaspora, boot hill boots, only home of the homeless, shell of the human mollusk, final unresting place, transit camp where the heart is, ghost hearth for will of the Good evening everyone, thank you for coming. I'm, I am, you are ten poems away from your next pint of beer. <laughs> I'm going to read from my from my book, which was very kindly published by by Dylan and Corrupt Press, and it was published earlier this year. It's called I Spy and Shanti, and thank you, Dylan, for rescuing me from a publisher who let me down. The room. Start with something simple and white. A round river stone that fits close in the palm of your hand, in that dimple where life meets and chance fans out. Hold it in your fist and let it warm your thoughts with possibilities of mica, feldspar, quartz. Pocket it with scrunchies and gum, let it weigh out worry like beads or salt. A narrative of tidings and fortunes an unmarked room. Keep your secrets locked in its grains, devilment in its small spaces, tamed. And when you're ready, find the right place, the edge of a grave. Set it down for others to see its power as carrier of memory. So that's how the book starts. Thank <laughs> you.